Hi, thanks so much for uh, joining us. If I could just ask you to introduce yourself, that'd be great. Oh, hi there. Um, I'm Gavin Jack. I'm a professor of management at Monash Business School in Australia. Lovely, thanks. Now, you've been researching menopause at work for a number of years now, Gavin, um, and I was wondering if you could really give a really quick overview in terms of how you think menopause and work uh, relate to each other. Sure. Uh, so uh, over the last few years, I've been working um, with a couple of different teams doing two projects, one based in um, higher education contexts and the other based in um, hospital and nursing contexts, looking at how um, women report the experience of menopause. Um, and what we found overall is, first of all, that for those, for those women who are reporting um, symptoms um, associated with menopause, that that does and is associated with their, work, with their work outcomes, but also in turn that aspects, particularly physical aspects of the work environment and psychosocial aspects of the work environment also shape that experience too. So if I look and give just some examples really of um, how specific symptoms associated with menopause um, link to work. There, um, what we found is for sure, not, not all women are reporting um, and finding menopause is a, a terrible time and having a, a, a great impact on work, but there's a decent amount that do. And for those, what we found it, it, through our statistical analysis is that the more frequent, frequently a symptom is reported and the more bothersome that's, that symptom is reported to be, um, that that has, for those women, it has a negative or a, a, a lowering impact on their commitment to the organization, their job satisfaction, um, their, um, uh, their engagement at work, and it also associated for those women with higher intention to quit or, or to leave the organization too. So you can see quite a negative relationship, I think, for those women, not for all, all women, um, between menopause symptoms and, and work outcomes. Of course, the other half is that this is an interactive relationship, right? So just the symptoms linked to work, so to work shapes the symptom experience, both to sometimes ameliorate or sometimes to make those symptoms worse. And there in the work that we've got, we find a particular role for supervisory support. So um, higher supervisory support has been linked in our, in our data with lower symptom reporting. And so to having more control over the workplace temperature, particularly for women who are reporting um, hot flushes and, and night sweats, that having access to control the immediate work um, environment in terms of temperature and to have access say, to desk fans can, can really ameliorate symptom experience. Mm -hmm. um, and beyond that, um, we've also conducted um, interviews, um, particularly when we looked at the women in, in higher education, there were a raft of cultural issues associated with the organization um, and with organizational practice um, that were seen to be uh, making symptoms worse. Um, so maybe just a couple to, to pick out. Um, one is, um, I, I guess, the fear of being viewed as an older worker was coming out for some women. So if one disclosed or it became known through some medium um, that you were going through menopause, the fear is that that would put into place a set of stereotypes that others would respond to you through and that that could um, often have a negative experience, subjective experience of work. Um, and then more broadly, the extent to which some women felt, can they disclose and talk comfortably to the line managers? And that was sometimes getting in the way um, for women seeking support um, that they might felt that they needed in the workplace context. Um, and, and finally, I guess it's important to say that this is, there's a diversity of experience, right? Um, and there's a great extent to which this is individualized for different women. And part of the reason why is it's important to see menopause at work as part of a broader time of life. So a whole set of issues going on for women in terms of their health, their well-being, their work and home functions, what's going on in their family, for example, that these all come together in an interesting um, jigsaw of experiences. So it's very important to see, I think, menopause experiences experience and work experience together as part of that wider tapestry for women. Fantastic. And if you were to give um, some examples of what you've seen as the best practice of managers when supporting staff going through menopause, what would they be? Yeah, so I think maybe just name some name two or three. I think um, organisations and managers can do some really quite simple things, some quite cost effective things to support women at work. 
Um, and some of these are borne out by our own research where we've asked women, how can you best be supported? So one is um, making information um, and education available um, for women going through menopause at work. Not to, not to, if you like, force women to engage in or have training, but just to know that that um, information and education is there. Um, managers can also draw attention to how flexible workplace practices, particularly around time and hours of work, and um, space at work and whether one can shift one's working space, which of course at the moment under COVID is an interesting discussion, I guess. Um, but knowing about those policies and how they can be used to, to benefit women that might feel a need to, um, um, to shift their working hours or working spaces. Um, and then also enabling um, something like control over workplace temperature, particularly something simple like getting a desk fan, right? And, and having, a, having a productive, positive conversation that cuts out lots of other conversations with people in the organization so you can get quickly to the, the support that you need. That those can um, often be the things when put into place that can make a quick and effective difference. But more broadly, I think what we're seeing now um, uh, is organizations trying to take more of a lead with this and looking at leaders um, demonstrating that it's okay to have conversations about menopause at work, but that it's also it's practically supported as well, and that it's embedded in, in, in different policy areas, whether it's health and well-being or workforce development, that it becomes part of a broader suite of policies and practices that already exist in the organization and can be accessed. Because that sends out the signal, of course, that, um, um, that it's, it's, it's okay uh, to not feel great at any point in time uh, with your experience, and that it's okay to ask for support as well. Professor Gavin Jack from Monash University, thank you so thank you very much for joining us. No worries. Thanks a lot.